from a 145 on my practice test to passing the USMLE step one. In this video, I'll share my journey and the strategies to turn things around. Hi guys, I'm Kartik. I'm a second year MD student in Northern California, and I just got my exam score back. Now, the notorious step one has been pass fail for a couple of years now, but as you guys know, it's still a hurdle that all medical students need to get over, and it's something that isn't an easy feat. There's a lot of content out there. A lot of content. I, mean, I can't emphasize that enough. There's so much content out there. And if you're anything like me, you, you're going to struggle through it. And it was a struggle for me to learn all this content, retain it, and regurgitate it on questions, practice exams, and on the day of. So I'm here to help you with what I did and what you can do to help your score elevate from the lower scores to that passing threshold so you can continue on with your medical school journey. So with that being said, let's go into what I did to bring my practice test score of a 33%, which equals a 145, to a passing score a couple months later. Well, first of all, let's go into UWorld. UWorld is the greatest resource you can use in terms of studying for stuff. I know everyone says this, and you guys are probably like, what is UWorld? I don't know how to use UWorld. When should I use UWorld? I'll answer all these questions. So UWorld is a website which you uh, either have to pay for or you might get free from your school depending on what school you go to. And they have a bank of around 3,800 questions, all step one based questions. Now they're divided up into blocks, different subjects, different topics, and etc. There's many different varieties you can do. So when you're doing your world, you have the option to either do uh, it in blocks that you're weak in, or you can do it all together as a random one, where you can select all different blocks, all different topics, and do it all at once. Now what I did was, at the beginning, I sort of broke it up into blocks. For example, my Monday would be a cardio, palm, and heme day, and then Tuesday would be neuro, endo, and GI mixed in. So I would do kind of um, certain blocks mixed in throughout the week. And then like on Saturday, I would do all blocks. 40 questions is more than sufficient enough for one block of practice. Now 40 questions um, covers what you're gonna see on the real day. 40 questions probably takes around one hour. Um, it does take a while. It takes a while to get used to the 40 questions, staying focused, but keep in mind, you're gonna be doing that seven times on the real day. So in my theory, what I did, I always did it in blocks. So whenever I was going to do UWorld, I would do a set of 40 questions and then that would be it. I wouldn't do any less than 40 questions because it was like, I should practice for the real day. If I'm going to be taking the real thing, why not practice like the real thing? So I not only kept doing 40 questions, but I also did them under timed. Now on UWorld, you have different options of time versus tutor and you can see Tutor um, usually gives you the option of the answer right after the question, while well, time you, doesn't give you the answer. It lets you go through all the questions and then gives you the right answers for each of the questions. So I prefer time the whole way through my study because I wanted it to mimic the exact real day of the exam. So that's what I did. So when should you use your world? You should use your world, uh, I would say right away, honestly. Maybe after like a couple of weeks of content review, I would say start your world right away. Um, I know a lot of people say maybe wait till a month or two into content, but if you have a short amount of time, you need to start practicing. And I would really ideally recommend maybe start two weeks of the other routine of going through Pathoma, going through Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm, and the Dirty Medicine videos, and then start your practice questions. You could even start the practice questions day one of your study because it's that vital. Practice questions help you understand the content, learn the content, your real world scores are going to be low. Don't worry about that. They're going to start low. They may even be low the whole time. It's fine. It, even if you're below average, you're fine because the average is around 64%. Now, I personally started my U worlds in 30%. That's where I started. And it took me a long time to get up, up, up. And it only happened with repetition, practice, and more content, but just pure repetition. That's what this test is. It's pure repetition on the content side, the practicing side, and just reviewing all the material. So start your work right away. Keep doing your questions. Don't worry about your scores. Don't let it affect you. Keep working and keep hustling at it. The only scores you should somewhat consider are your practice test scores, because those are gonna show you where you're at, where you need to improve, how much you need to improve. But you will practice questions 
the percents may be higher or lower because it might be tailored to weakness because it's a less amount of content. So it might be hyper-focused on all your weaknesses or hyper-focused on all your screens so you're getting like 100 percent Don't worry about the percentage at that much at all. Don't let it get to your head. Just get the your practice questions done. The next thing I did for my study was Anki. Now Anki is a great resource to use. I know a lot of people use it, but a lot of people don't also like using it. But I personally gotta say, if you're weak on memory, then memory is not your strong suit. Anki is the go-to. So on Anki, the decks that I used, I'll link them down below. Um, I used a Duke deck from Patoma. So Duke deck actually relates exactly to what Patoma teaches. And it's a great way to kind of reinforce what you learn from Patoma videos and the Patoma book. I'm sure many of you have heard of Patoma. It's a great resource. Um, it is paid. Now, again, some schools offer for free, some do not. It depends on where you're at, but I really recommend Pathoma. It's a good overview of pathology and just a great overview of all the organ systems, what they do, how they work with each other, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in terms of the other Anki cards I did, I did the sketchy cards. Now, I did the sketchy micro and the sketchy farm cards because those are the videos I watched. I locked those cards as I completed the videos. So for example, if I did the penicillin video, I would have learned it from the video, go to Anki the next day, unlock the penicillin cards, and do those maybe 20, 30 cards of penicillin in my Anki day as my new cards. So that's something that you should make sure you're unlocking right after you learn it. Don't unlock before because you're going to be confused unless you already know the content. If you know the content, then start unlocking it. That's why I recommend you watch the content and then you unlock the Anki cards. So for Anki, just to recap, all I did was Duke deck and the sketchy decks. And then uh, going from Anki, after that, I would go into correcting my own world. So now you're wondering, how do I correct your world? Well, Correcting your world is kind of an art. Now I'm not gonna lie, people out there are just correcting your world, just looking at wrong answers, maybe just writing out some quick stuff. But I started with that at the beginning, but I started to realize that you world corrections are actually very, very vital. You need to do your world corrections every time you do a block. And I really recommend you do corrections right after you do a block. So maybe you might take a few hours of break, but I don't recommend you do another new Uber block unless you corrected the previous ones. Because you're probably going to have some mistakes at least, and even some corrections of the correct answers, you'll get to learn what you knew. Maybe you guessed that one right. Maybe you actually did know that one. Just You kind of get to know what you know, what you don't know, what you need to work on. It's very vital. Now going on to how to correct word questions, you're going to need a few things. This is the only time I use the first aid. For first date, what I did was if, let's say, I'm going through the corrections and like one of the questions, like question 22 says, um, what is Kluber-Bolsey syndrome? And I just can't seem to understand it from the UWorld explanation. I would resort to first date. And for first aid, I would type in command F because I have an electronic PDF, um, type that in. And then there I would get the, the description of the disease, what it is, and honestly, that was enough for me to understand. I can go on to, um, can answer this you would question if I'm getting this type of question again. So that was great. But in the off chance that first aid didn't cover that disease because there were some diseases that weren't in first aid, some drugs weren't in first aid, I had to go to Google. And Google um, has everything you need. Obviously, it's not going to be perfectly tailored for a medical student, but it was great. It was good enough for me to get a basic understanding. So after correcting the U world, what I next I did was Pathoma videos. I watched you a couple a day. I think there are three Pathoma videos a day I watched and um, they were great. They kind of cover everything you need for that audience as well over all of it. Within that video, usually within 20 minutes or less, he covers everything you need to know for step one. And it's pretty on the high yield side. Those are great for you if you only have a few months to study. Cover that, you'll be fine. So next, what I did after the Pathoma series on the day was I would go to Dirty Medicine's Biochemistry series. Now, some of you may have heard, but Dirty Medicine is a YouTube channel, and this guy makes some fantastic content on um, step one material, medical school material in general. So after I watched the Biochem series, there's about 30 videos. I usually ended up watching one a day, so within a month, I completed it. Next, I would go into my sketchy micro videos. 
and I usually watch about two of these and they were pretty good. They cover usually like a topic that you're doing. So if you want to learn about histoplasmosis, they have one video on that, then blessing of plasmosis, that one, and et cetera, et cetera. And that all the, I would do the two of those, and then I would move on to sketchy far, which is coming from the college. And then I would do two videos of those as well. I think there's around 120 micro videos and around 100 farm videos. Now it's give or take, but that's about how many they were. Both of them completely two days before my test. So don't worry if you're seeming like you're getting rushed and you're only gonna finish up with the videos right before you test it, that's perfectly fine. But I really highly recommend you go through all this series because back when I took that first test, the first 33%, the 145 that I got, I had no clue any farm. I barely knew any micro. And I would, I would really heavily say micro farm increased my score the most out of anything else that I learned content was. Sure, Pathoma helped me learn the content that I was weak on, maybe reinforce stuff from medical school, learn some new stuff, but my girl farm, amazing, blissful. It was great content, great for the memory. So next, after the biochem series of Dirty Medicine, what I did next was I did 40 more questions of you. So another block. And this block wasn't my typical block. It wasn't like, you know, per subject, maybe all subjects, but it was actually only my incorrects. So this is kind of what you start doing. I would recommend you start doing after like maybe a few weeks, maybe even a month of studying. You're gonna have piled a list of incorrects and doing those incorrects is amazing because you're going over the questions that you don't know, that you already went over. So it's helping you reinforce, do you remember and know the content that you went over? It's really good for understanding, making sure you understand the concept really well. I highly recommend doing your incorrects. Uh, and I did them every day at the end of the day, towards the end of the day. And it was a great for, way for me to reinforce and make sure that I totally understood the content. And then after doing those 40 incorrects, I would do corrections on those incorrects. So basically this is the second time I'm doing corrections on them. And it was much faster because I've already seen these questions before. I've already corrected them before. Now I'm just making sure do I know this content? Do I not know this content? What do I still need to work on? What do I do not, don't need to work on? And usually here, I would go make Anki cards. So I know we talked about doing Anki uh, specific decks, but I had another Anki deck of my personal Anki cards where I made uh, cards about topics that I totally did not know. So in some incorrect questions, I kept getting them wrong and wrong and wrong. It was because I just didn't understand the fundamental concepts. So I would go on to maybe some YouTube videos, look up the concept, Google them, um, go to first aid, read up, blah, blah, blah. And I'd make an Anki card uh, tailored to me on what the topic is, what the subject is, and what I need to learn. So that's what I did. And it helped me reinforce those incorrect topics and help me make sure that I totally understand them. So after I did those corrections of those 40 questions of the incorrects of New World, I would go on to doing my own notes. So I had notes on all questions I done. So basically my correct answers, my wrong answers, anything I just were a little tricked on, up on, even if it was a slight little thing, it was like, oh shoot, I remember that. But I don't, I forgot it during the question. I've already done it wrong. So I make sure, okay, I won't get this wrong again. And that's what I went over every day. End of my study period, I had 192 pages of handwritten corrections um, from UWorld, my NBME practice tests, my UWorld practice tests, um, all combined into one document that had all my little detailed notes. And I would go over them section by section. I would have them split up in my cardiology, palm, heme, etc. So I'm making sure it was a little organized. So if I wanted to go back and review a specific topic um, that I'm weak in and just want to go over the stuff that I just don't know in that topic, I could just um, go command F it on my iPad and do it. Now, um, I use Notability. So that's what I did my notes on. And it, I really liked it. Other people have used good notes. Whatever works best for you, but on Notability, um, if you need help, reach out to me, I can let you know how to set up a great notability note. After going through those notes, I would then end up doing the Anki that I created earlier of the questions I totally don't understand. So basically I would do those, maybe they were like 40, 50 cards, not much Anki at all for those, but I would do two separate Anki's throughout the day. 
one in the morning of the decks and this one at night right before sleeping uh the topics i really don't know so all in all going back over my study style it's more so focused on refining the stuff the details i don't know making sure every little minuscule detail that i don't know i will know so kind of just reinforcing because i myself am really bad from memory and i know the best way for me is to just re repeat 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 and i've talked to my other friends taking step one and even if they have great memory during normal school year it's just too much because there's so much content on step one there's a lot of content so you're just gonna have to do repetition after repetition after repetition through Anki, through your own notes, and just every method you can. And honestly, the study schedule that I give you is exactly what I did on a daily basis. And not only this, I kind of do this during school time as well. I only have three weeks after school to study dedicated for step one. And it was enough for me because I have been doing the schedule and repeating and reviewing all the content I knew and didn't know and it was great. It worked brilliantly. And I really recommend you guys do it too. So in terms of practice tests, I usually ended up doing a practice test maybe every other weekend. But then towards the end, towards my dedicated period of the three weeks I had, I did one like every weekend. And then I did free 120, if you guys have heard of that. That's not like an option. You must do that. Do it like a couple of days before your test. I did it two days before my test. And it's great because the NVMe practice test, no one really tells you this. That's not the format that you're gonna see on test day. The NBME practice tests are nothing like the formats you see. Your world is more similar to the actual day than not. But free 120, that's exactly what you're gonna see on test day. So if you want, you can just go on to free 120 anytime. Um, I can link it down below. And from there, you just go on to free 120, look at it, and you can look at the style. But do the questions last minute a couple of days before your exam because it's kind of like a final um, rundown of what you know where you're at and etc so that's something i think you guys should really do right before your test it's a last minute review of what you know and it it's what got me confident for the test i scored decent enough on it for myself and i was like all right i can pass this i just have to perform just as good on a day of. so that's what i ended up doing i took it wednesday the freedom 20 and took the actual test on Saturday. Honestly, for step one, to pass it, you just need a basic understanding of everything. You don't need to dive in deep, you don't need to learn everything to the core. To pass this test, get the basics down, pass the test, and then focus on step two. Because step two is a way more important exam now. It's graded, it's scored on like step one, which is pass fail. So your efforts for step one should be get it passed, learn the basics of everything, so you have a great foundation, and then move on past this test. Go step two, learn that one. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put the links to everything below in the description box. Uh, please subscribe, please like, and comment down any questions you guys have for me, and I'll get back to you ASAP. And thank you for watching.